Shalom, this is GMS Holland Sit Downs coming back with a lesson. Want to give all praises, glory, and the highest honor to Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Rakakadash, double honors to the elder apostle of Great Millstone, peace and salutations to the elect out there spreading this word in sincerity and in truth all over the four corners of the earth. God, this is going to be another lesson of the visualize the vision. Like I said, uh, I'm going to do a new series, you know, so this is going to be part two, visualize the vision. And uh, in those series, I'm going to go into what the, the prophet saw and why he, he um, described it the way he did, you know, hoping that with that, you know, through the scriptures and through the explanation, more light will be shine, uh, shined upon you, you know, to see actually what they saw. Because, you know, when we read the Bible, we have to read and visualize it. It's very important. So you can you can put everything in perspective and understand why it is mentioned like that. So basically what I want to go into is... Um, Joel chapter 2 verse um, 4, which is linked to Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9, verse 17. Let's see. Shall I take this one also with it? Hmm. Gone. I'm I'm gonna take that one also. Gone. So this is um, Revelation chapter nine, verse sixteen, and the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand. And I heard the number of them. So we know the breakdown is that this is referring to the missiles. The ICBM missiles, the intercontinental ballistic missiles. 200,000 thousand represents what? 200 million missiles. 200 million missiles is going to be shot in this upcoming war. World War Three. You know, and they're going to land. Verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth and brimstone, which brimstone is one of the main ingredients of a nuclear missile. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of man killed by the fire and by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. So what does Revelation actually describe unto us? Horsemen and horses, 200 million. With heads um, like a lion and tails like a serpent, wherein their power is. Well, the power of a, of a horse is not in his tail. It's not in his head neither. It's in his legs. You know, and he was uh, had breastplates of fire and jacinth and brimstone. Which 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 horses are covered in fire? You know, or, or having fire issuing behind them and in front of them. What 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 horses with, with lion heads and, and serpent tails are there? They don't exist. So it's a vision, it's a description of something that's far greater behind the comprehension 
of the prophet back in those days. This was John the Revelator who saw these, this thing. And he saw the vision. And thus, like it says, verse 17, And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and of brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. Now I checked out this one thing um, recently. Let me see. Um, horsepower. So it says, horsepower is defined as the power that a horse gives when pulling, and it is used informally to mean power, or the power needed to raise 550 pounds of a distance of one foot in one second, or the power needed to move 300, uh, it's like a 33,000 pounds a distance of one foot in one minute. So, um... Horsepower is horsepower speed. Horsepower is a unit of power and miles per hour is a unit of speed. So here it tells you horsepower uh, represents the power, you know, that uh, um, wherewith an object is able to move. Uh, physics tells us that power and speed are related by the, um, the equation power is force. According to his relationship, all we need to know is the force exerted on a body to be able to convert between its power and its speed it travels. My point is, because this this garbage that they be adding onto it, man. I don't want to push that Edomite uh, um, false uh, science falsely so called. So the thing that I want to show you is that even in the known world of today, guess what? They use horsepower to describe the speed and the power of, of uh, objects that move that are able to push or that are able to pull a certain amount of weight and move forward that's what esau uses in this in this modern day world so back in those days what did the prophets do the the things that were able to move in a swift pace were were horses you had camels that that uh, were used as as uh, as so-called vehicles, and you had donkeys that were used as so-called vehicles, but they weren't as fast as horses. If you would travel by horse, you would be faster. Then you had other uh, uh, qualities of a camel, which is uh, the, how it travels through the desert, but uh, without without drinking and without water and stuff like that. But um, the the horse represents power and speed. Now. What did the, uh, John the Revelator see? He saw power and speed combined with fire and brimstone, combined with a with uh, 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 terrific uh, destruction that came out of that mouth and a, a great power that issued out of the tail. You see? Now what's that referring to, man? That's referring to nuclear missiles. Nuclear missiles, man. The tail uh, uh, as a serpent is referring to the to the to the um, how you say that to the smoke and the fire that the nuclear missiles leave behind. You see the smoke and the fire that comes from the back. John the Revelator said it's like a serpent. And the power comes from there. You see that the power of this of this nuclear uh, missile comes from the back, it drives forward because of the the, the so-called horsepower that has been issue, is, issued out from the back. So he described that as a serpent. And if you look at it, you know, something that is uh, formed as a tail like that, you know, or long, a long, if let's say these missiles would be higher in the, in the sky, you know, launched, you know, uh, further, 
guess what? You would uh, you would see a tail. You would see a big tail going through the sky, uh, with in front of that um, uh, a small dot. You know that leaves behind a trail. Which that moves us into the um, second verse that I'm gonna hit concerning this visualizing the vision, which is Joel chapter two verse one. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Which that's what we're doing, man. We're sounding an alarm. We're blowing the trumpet, which is the which is bringing out the scriptures, bringing out the um, the judgment that is about to come upon this earth. That's what we're calling out. We're calling out that the nuclear missiles is, is about to be shot and fired. This war is not going to be a war of, of guns and shooting and tanks. This war is going to be a war of nuclear fire. It's going to be over quick. So we be warning the people. Not only the people of Israel, but also, uh, also the heathen so they can tremble for the fear of this up and coming day. Verse 2, a dark, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. So it's referring to a great people and a strong. There had not ever, there had not been ever the like. Neither shall be any more hereafter, even to the years of many generations. Why is that? Because there were never, you, uh, there, uh, back in the days there weren't no nuclear missiles. That had that amount of power. You know. In this Edomite society. There were nuclear missiles. But not like how they are right now man. Hypersonic nuclear missiles. Nuclear missiles that go into space. And come down with a hypersonic speed. Nuclear missiles that move on the water. As the uh, torpedoes. Come up and blast up on the earth. Nuclear missiles that can dodge, duck and dodge. So there was not not ever a people like this uh, uh, um, representing those missiles, because that's what what um, what uh, Joel saw. He saw a great army, horses and horsemen, which which are those nuclear missiles. I'm gonna explain in a minute why. A great people and a strong there had not been ever the like. Neither shall there be any more here after it. Even to the years of many generations. Why? Because in the nuclear missiles, there ain't going to be no nuclear missiles, man. It's, what did I say? Slakia. In the, in the kingdom that is about to come, in the kingdom of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, there ain't going to be no nuclear missiles, man. You know, I thought I messed up, kind of messed up in the, in the, in the sentence, but I'm not, I'm not sure. So I'm, I'm not even going to repeat what I think I said. So in the kingdom, there ain't going to be no nuclear missiles. And back in the days, you ain't had no nuclear missiles. Salakia. That's why uh, it says that. Verse 3. A fire devoured before them. And behind them, a flame burned. You see, because the fire that's in front of them is when they hit their target. You know, you're going to create that mushroom cloud, which we all know. But the flame burned. And behind them a flame burned. We just saw that. Behind them a flame burned. You see? This is what I'm talking about. And in front of them issued fire. As soon as these nuclear missiles drop, fire issued before, uh, in front of them. And that's also why... Let me see if I can go back here. Yeah. That's also why Revelation over here says... Um, Revelation 9 and 17. And thus I saw the horses, nuclear missiles in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and, uh, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. You know, why is the why is the um, why is the prophet linking um Linking it with the hand, uh, heads of uh, lions, because the lion 
is is known to be the most powerful animal so his power is in his head that's what he kill with that's what he destroys with that's what he eats with that's what he devours with and guess what the prophet saw that these horses were devouring the land so when a, when a lion kills he, de he devours his prey that's a known fact lion devours his prey so he said like hey man these horses man they are so powerful when as soon as they hit fire issued out of their heads like it says that which whose heads is like lions let me read it again and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. So why is he referring to the heads as lions? Because they devour. But not like a lion. They just devour. Not the same way. But they do devour. But they devour on, on this manner. And out of their mouths issued fire and brimstone. And smoke and brimstone. So that's that nuclear missile that drops upon the land. Okay, back to this, Joel chapter 2, verse 3, a fire devoured before them. So that's the same thing as what, uh, what uh, John the Revelator said, uh, and Joel also describes here, and behind them a flame burneth, that's that tail, that's that serpent tail. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them, because uh, uh, it's double full. First and foremost, um, the, uh, the nations up upbraid America to be that golden city. The scripture also describes uh, America to be a golden cup in the Lord's hand. The scriptures also uh, describe America to be that golden city in uh, in um, Isaiah chapter 14, I believe. Let me, let me see, type it. Golden. Golden city. Isaiah 14 and 4. That thou shalt take up this prophet against the king of Babylon and say, How had the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. You know, that's why it says, um, The land is as the, the garden of uh, Eden before them. But then, on the other hand, when you have created something that has a certain purpose, the purpose of these nuclear missiles is to destroy. So the more great and the more uh, 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 um, beautiful that land is, the more he fulfills his purpose is he, if he does what he does. So that land is before him. His purpose is to destroy. So that's what he does to the land. Looking at this land is like looking at, uh, at the paradise, which his, his, his job is to destroy it, make it desolate. So that's what he's going to do. The land is before them as Eden, Slakia, a, a fire devoured before before them, uh, and behind them a flame burned. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, you know, because it's 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 uh, still still standing. People is living. Everything is going going how it's so called supposed to be in their eyes. But when these nuclear missiles is done with their purpose, guess what? And behind them, a desolate wilderness. Why? Because as soon as these missiles drop, their purpose is fulfilled. And the desolate wilderness is, has, be, has been popped up, man. You know? Like, if you have... Um, if you have a... a uh, let's say the, 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 the purpose of a cleaning mop, mop is to clean the floor. So if there is a dirty floor... And you and you pull out the mop. Basically, that floor is what he's designed to uh, uh, design. Uh, it's like what he is created for, 
to clean it. When it's dirty, that's when he comes out. You know, so the floor is when it's dirty. That's what the what the the mop is designed to do is to clean it. Now these missiles is are designed to destroy this land. You know, so when they see it, that's that's what that's their purpose. You know. I hope that makes sense. And behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. So, what does that mean? The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Now, this is what the prophet means, and this is why the prophet describes them as horsemen. If you look at horses running in the desert, what do you see? What do you see? I wanted to zoom in. Let's say this picture was further, and let's say there was a 200 million missiles running. Uh, it's like a 200 million um, horses running. You stand on the hilltop, and these horses is running in the desert. The thing that you see is a small dot moving forward with the trail of smoke behind it that's the same thing that's happening right here let's say the missiles were uh, um uh not to be seen as as a as a, as a long object but further then the thing that you would see actually is just a dot a dot with fire and smoke behind it. The same thing goes with horses. If you look at them from a distance running in the desert. The thing that you see is a dot with a trail behind them. Moving forward. That's what the prophet saw. But then in the sky. You know and and, and horses often time has, have horsemen upon them. Because if, if the prophet looked at them. And he saw them moving towards a target. They had to be. They had to be. Um. Uh, 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 um, um, I say say that with horsemen to direct them to their uh, um, um, to their destination, especially when they are in line like that, going in the same direction. They had to be driven by horsemen. So this is what the prophet saw. He saw horses in the sky with a trail behind them. But guess what? Those horses are those nuclear missiles. And when they land, they will devour. And their tail is like a serpent. Because that's what they leave behind. A trail of fire and smoke. So to go back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 9 verse um, 18. By these three... By these three... These three referring to the fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three, the third part of man uh, was the third part of man killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had, and had heads and with them they do hurt. You see, the heads are the things that hurt. You see, one more scripture that also refers to the nuclear missiles as being um, as being um, horses. Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 4, And I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. So the Most High is putting jaw, uh, hooks in the jaws of uh, Russia, which is Gog and Magog, and they are bringing forth an army of horses and horsemen, which are those nuclear missiles. If you watch the news closely, you see Russia is constantly developing new nuclear missiles. They brought out the Satan II. They brought out the hypersonic missile. They brought out the missile that travels through space and comes back in, uh, underneath the ozone layer. You know? That's why it says, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. 
They have all kinds of uh, nuclear missiles. Even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, you know, representing those nuclear missiles. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with the shields and helmet. You know, the, the allied nations, man, where were they going to fight against America? They're going to team up and shoot those 200 million missiles towards America. You know, which the prophet, like I said, describes as horses, which makes complete sense. So with that, I'm going to say, call a lawyer, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shai, Basham, Rakakudar, Shalom, to the elect.